Bula, I'm DJ Toro. Join me every Monday to Thursday, 7 until midnight. The premium classics on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Tonight, FSC mill worker who suffered severe burns has died in hospital. New joint identification cards launched ready for issuance to the public. And former police officer cleared of drug-related charges. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. The man who suffered burns to 60% of his body at the Lautoka sugar mill last Thursday has died after four days in hospital. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro has confirmed that the mill worker succumbed to his injuries last night. Christopher Chand with this story. 44-year-old Samuel Asinga Tokadake died as a result of burns he had sustained after an evaporator spilled boiling liquid over him. I was shocked. Eh? Yeah. Ah. No. And, uh, I know he's <laughs> dead then. He is survived by his wife and five children. Some are too young to realize that their father is no more. Una says he had shown signs of improvement until nine o'clock last night. But from that day, I can see the change from the eyes. Like when the nurse, something happened to my husband in the rush. I called the doctor, so they try their best, but they say can't. FSC Executive Chairman Abdul Khan says, following the funeral, they will ensure the family is assisted. After the funeral, and during the funeral, after that, if you want something from me, from my family, so. They are ready to support us. The FSC is investigating the incident and reviewing safety procedures to ensure such an incident is never repeated. Christopher Chant, FBC News. And Chris joins us now live from Nandi. Chris, the FSC has another wish on its hands. Mill workers have voted in favor of a strike. What can you tell us? Yes, Jackie, members of the Fiji Sugar and General Workers Union have voted to go on strike after last week's secret ballots, which were held at the four mills. Union leader Felix Anthony says 67.5% of the union voted, of which 90% voted in favor of industrial action. Anthony says this fulfills the legal requirement to go on strike, but their National Executive Committee will now decide on the next course of action. Attorney General Aya Seth Kayum says they have made substantial investment to rescue the industry from collapse. This investment has begun to turn around the FSC without a single job being lost and it is in the national interest for this to continue. He says FSC employees have received a 5.3% pay rise and improved benefits and can look forward to better job security. The AG adds that given the importance of this industry, the Benimarama government can't allow this industry to collapse because of the actions of a minority. He says they are hoping common sense will prevail and that the workers won't go on strike. The union wants a pay rise for workers, saying they are living in extreme poverty with no employment or income for up to eight months each year. Thanks so much for that, Back Christopher. Back to you, Jackie. Fiji's Foreign Minister Ratu Inoke Kumbombola has appealed for Fiji and Australia to mend their relationship. Speaking at the 20th Australia Fiji Business Forum in Brisbane, Australia this morning, the minister was critical of the Australian government's stand on Fiji. The minister said the nature of the divide between Fiji and Australia over the events of 2006 is well known, but we remain deeply disappointed that instead of constructive engagement, Australia chose to punish Fiji. He added, quote, we imagined perhaps naively that our bigger neighbors, Australia and New Zealand, might at least try to understand what we were trying to achieve. But they turned their backs on us and set about trying to damage the country in the hope that they would destroy our reformist government. 
It is not easy to forget Australia's efforts at the United Nations to bring an end to our three-decade-long commitment to UN peacekeeping. It is not easy to forget the Australian government's action in severing our access to loans from the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. It is not easy to forget the travel bans." Unquote. Ratu Inoke was also critical of Australia's decision to settle asylum seekers in Melanesia. The Fijian government is decidedly less than happy about Australia's plan to move asylum seekers seeking to settle in Australia to, into Melanesia, into our neighbourhood. That threatens to destabilise the already delicate social and economic balances in our societies. The Australian government has used its economic muscle to persuade one of our Melanesian governments to accept thousands of people who are not Pacific Islanders. Fiji can never have an equal and fair society if a single Fijian woman is discriminated against. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama made the statement while opening the Mao Resource Centre in Namosi. Api Solomidokar reports. In his address, Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama stressed the importance of gender equality. Too many men in Fiji still think it's their right to demean and mistreat women. Domestic violence is still a major problem and far too many women I exploited. By Numerama, as the government has modernized its laws to reflect equality and both men and women should start changing their mindset. We need to encourage women to stand up for their rights and be empowered. We need to make them more aware of their own importance in their families and their communities. Today also marked the start of the second phase of seaweed planting training at Mao village by the Indonesian government. Indonesia has attracted 17 million US dollars in investment from a number of companies as well as has managed to create job for over 600 people. Experts say when it comes to commercial seaweed planting, Fiji is no different from Indonesia. Fiji is the uh, same country like Indonesia. We have uh, many, many or plenty of uh, islands because we have people, many, many people stay in the island. That's why our government, uh, your government, uh, determined that seaweed is very, uh, very good for uh, people in island. To, to planting the seaweed in island, they can help themselves. The women of Mau have processed the seaweed to produce items such as tomato sauce, noodles, sausage and juice, non-food items such as skin care products and bathing soap. Apisalome Doka, FBC News. A 36-year-old woman has been charged with two counts of manslaughter following the death of her twin daughters in a drowning incident in Malolo early this year. Police say Lanieta Nairambo was charged and produced at the Nandi Magistrates Court today. Nairambo has deferred taking a plea and has been remanded in custody. She will reappear in court tomorrow morning. The twins, aged 1 to 11 months, were playing outside their home when they allegedly wandered off to a nearby pond where the tragic incident took place. Coming up, new skills help underprivileged women find jobs. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this. Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM Today Seed Music. Nimbula, Mathango Nimilote in Nice Sorotomboa, Namaka Minoruki known on a Vekavi Muniti Kin of Wakarobuka, Romana Vesama, Kinabibo, Barotakin in Recomalolo, and a radio Fijuan and a Wongani Vianiano, Gay Namakiokina. Welcome back, you're watching FBC News. The joint identity card issued by the Fiji National Provident Fund and the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority was launched today. People can now get these cards from FERCA and FMPF centers around the country. Chanel Sivan tells us more. The cards will be issued to 250,000 FNPF members who also have tax identification numbers or TINs. 
This card will ease the exchange of information between the two entities. We will further enhance our working relationships uh, between uh, FERCA and FNPF, especially in terms of information sharing. This will benefit uh, and add value to our members and also taxpayers and the general public at large. FNPF Chief Executive Isake Taito says this will lift the burden of looking for your tax identification numbers by going through files and folders. These cards are also designed to pick out fraud. We've already uh, identified a few cases in the West whereby a tin has been uh, manipulated. Eh? So um, someone has got two, three tins, for example, eh? to try and claim refunds. So we found that out very lately. Eh? In fact, it happened late last year. So um, you know, people can just forge, you know, uh, forge the signature and all that. Eh? So the new cards will enhance members and taxpayers experience in obtaining service that require key identifiers. Uh, Non-payment is obviously becoming an issue and I think we need to highlight on that particular area. But uh, fundamentally I think it's a very good project. It does put in place uh, the way forward in having a national ID card. Both organizations have identified Suva as the first location for issuing these cards since it has the majority of Fiji's workers. Chanal Shivan, FBC News. A former police officer charged with two counts of unlawfully supplying illicit drugs has been discharged by the Suva Magistrates Court. 39-year-old Amani Mbosenawai was accused of supplying the drugs to a local drug dealer. The father of three was stationed at the Nambour Police Station at the time of the alleged incident last year. I would like to thank uh, God for answering my uh, prayer and uh, also I would like to thank uh, the family for their support throughout the one year that I was uh, being charged and uh, uh, taken to court uh, regarding this uh, allegation of uh, missing exhibit from Nambua. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions withdrew the charges against Mbose Nawai but didn't state its reasons. The Land Transport Authority has grounded 10 buses of the Nasese bus fleet after a snap audit yesterday. On Saturday, the tire came off an assessor bus in Nasinu and hit a pedestrian who's still in the CWM hospital. The bus driver, 51-year-old Sudesh Pillay, described how the tire became detached from the bus. He, he's also given a statement to police in Valilevu. The tire is fixed with two bearings, inner and outer bearing, and there's a lock there. The lock is still on the bus, and the bearing is bust. So the tire came off because of that bearing. In my opinion, I would say that the road condition is very bad, like the buses are running there and it has lots of passengers there. And there's all bumpy roads and lots of potholes. Fiji Roads Authority CEO Neil Cook has questioned the driver's explanation, saying the FRA is working to improve all roads in the country. There's been a delay in the repairing of cane access roads in the Northern Division. The Fiji Sugar Corporation says it was caused by contractors not fulfilling their obligations. Cane farmers and lorry operators in Lombasa had earlier complained to FBC News, saying poor access roads were delaying cane supply to the mills. We did find out that a number of the cane access roads that was given to contractors in good faith to actually complete weren't complete. So the committee that's made out of Ministry of Sugar, ourselves, and the uh, Growers' Council went across and had a look at it and changed the number of the contractors to ensure that the cane access roads are being done. The government had set aside a little over $2 million to repair cane access roads. Training in sewing for disabled women and social welfare beneficiaries has seen some success in Suva. As Shireen Lata reports, many of these women have already found jobs. Fiji's first sewing centre was opened last year to help disadvantaged women take control of their lives. Since then, 48 women have been employed and are earning for their families. Most of them have either landed work on uh, government factories and other standardized uh, employment um, agencies. Also, some of them have uh, progressed into making uh, these their own business and uh, setting up their own business. At all. Many are getting paid as much as double the amount received in government grant. So we've trained uh, last year uh, two women from Lambasa who came over. We hope that the uh, women that we've trained that have gone back to Lambasa be able to uh, set up a northern disability centre, similar programme for women out there in the northern division. The sewing centre has another round of training from next month until October. Uh, right now we're 
right now we are recruiting people who are the social welfare offices, the field offices who are out there in the Nosori uh, Suva Nasino corridor so that we will be able to get a, a decent number that we'll be able to make up on the normal intake that we will be able to accommodate. The Ministry of Social Welfare will provide $21,000 for the three months training and also provide weekly allowance. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Jamie is here to start off yet another sporting week and he has the latest about the Escort Shield final to be played on Saturday. That's right, Jackie. Another great week coming up for sports. After the break, we have the build-up to the big Suva Club final this weekend. Also, an Australian athlete comes home to train. Stay with us for the details. Isambulu Binaka. Pedango wadi suri ndalai. Nama kiu mani wasi ningo ngorota kina lali ne kabi. Mai na tolu kina bitu. Ena moni dingi na por rombuka. Ena mbula FM. Naban dua ena serre. Suraj ki pahili kiran ke saath din ki shuruat ki jie. Subha ka mangal prabhat aap ko shubh ho. Subha subha ho khushiyo ka mila. Na logo ki parva na dunia ka jamila. Panchiyo ka sangeet ho aur mausam albela. Mubarak ho aap ko ye khub surat sabera. हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहें रेडियो फिजिटो पर हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ वेलकम बैक टू एफबीसी स्पोर्ट्स इन ऑल एफर्ट्स टू रिटेन द एस्कॉट सील फॉर द थर्ड कंसेक्यूटिव ईयर द नेवी रग्बी साइड इज ब्रोट इन फ्लाइंग फिजियंस कोच इन नोके माले टू असिस्ट द ट्रेनिंग Male, a former Navy rep, has, asked, has been asked to assist the team in the absence of current coach Solomon Spuna, who is sick. Spuna, however, will rejoin the team in time for Saturday's final against police. And in the meantime, hopes Male can provide some valuable tips. Navy's main focus at training this week will be on mental toughness in order to handle pressure situations, which is expected from the police team this weekend. Nandi has become the second team from Fiji to qualify for the OFC Champions League next season. This after they beat Mba 3-1 in the Fiji Sun GP Batteries National League yesterday. Coupled with Suba and Lautoko playing out a two-all draw, Jax Nandi were able to achieve its dream. Inder Singh with more. Back from the dead was the saying which described the Nandi football side after his 3-1 win over Ba. The Jets had his hopes of playing in the OFC Champions League next season was hanging by a thread until just after 5 p.m. yesterday. I had off for my boys, they're proving, uh, proving too strong for Bayern in their ground. I think so. it uh, definitely shows that Nandi can beat any team uh, whenever they want to. And the Fiji Fact Champs, who had led the league for a good part of the season, had a fellow Western team to thank for, for its achievement. I'd like to thank uh, Lotoka for not giving away the game or playing an easy game because they were two in the running of the second position. I think so they did a wonder for helping us to go into second position. Done and dusted and having one title in the cabinet and achieving the aim of playing at the highest level of club football in the Oceania region. What's next for the Green Machine? We'll give our back shot in the Battle of Giants. I know we're playing two matches in Lambasa. It will be a crucial matches and we'll take a match when it comes to. Most things are going in Nandi's favour this year, which sure makes them a top bet for more this season. And before we forget, it was Nandi's fourth straight win over Bar in as many matches. In racing, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Jacks Nandi football side will face off with Auckland City in Group B of the OFC Champions League next season. Along with City, the Kamal Swami coach side will also meet the top qualifier from Tahiti and the second place side from Vanuatu's league. Ba will meet the winners from Vanuatu, New Caledonia and Papua New Guinea. From Korea with love. That's what Fiji Taekwondo athletes have been getting in the form of seven Taekwondo student instructors from the Korean Pre Peace Corp group, brother, who are helping out with their Pacific Mini Games preparations. As Elena McDonald reports, for two weeks now, our team Fiji athletes have been hitting the mat hard with sparring exercises. Meet the Furious Seven. They're the latest Taekwondo group Korea has had to offer to help boost the sport in Fiji. Next month, uh, we will be Hibiscus and uh, Hibiscus Festival. We will together is a demonstration. For one particular Fiji athlete, it's been one of her hardest, yet the best preparations she could ask for. They really kick hard and I get really hard impacts. 
So I think it really helps me to stand and how to grow even more. And when you're the lone female athlete, seeing one of your own as a sparring partner can be a sight for sore eyes. This is a good opportunity for me to spar with someone on my own uh, ground mm -hmm. instead of males, which is uh, not comparable sometimes. Their visit has no doubt increased Fiji's medal chances at the Games. Eight sports will feature at the September mini games and with all the resources being pulled, overseas outings being taken and preparations being done by Team Fiji athletes, we're definitely starting to look like the top bets for Wallace and Fatuna. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. Perseverance, dedication and strong faith has been the key to success for one particular sportswoman. Australia-based athlete Violin Deloy, has, whose father is from Lekemba, has spent the last month in Fiji preparing for an upcoming tournament. Salen Daudakadaka reports. She represented Australia to the recent Oceania Games in Tahiti, going up against some of the region's best in the 100 meters and 60 meters master sprint event. Running since she was eight years old, Violin Deloy says it's a liberating experience. Um, it's just the freedom that I get in running. Like, I think with whatever gift God has given you, like you just sense that sense of freedom. And um, that's what I get from track and field, and that's why I keep going. The Sydney-based athlete is currently preparing for the Great Barrier Reef Masters Games in Cairns, Australia, and says she could not have chosen a better place to prepare. And I've come this year, and I've had an awesome session this morning at the track, and, you know, it's, it's the best I've ever, I've, you know, I've, tried, I've run on. You know, I run at Homebush in Sydney, I run in, you know, tracks in uh, Sydney and around the country and of Australia. And um, yeah, this is very, is very much international standard and um, thank God that, you know, you guys have it because you guys, Fijians, are sprinters, you know, and it's a blessing, it's a blessing. Dilaw spends her final week in the country before departing back home to Australia to take on bigger challenges that lie ahead. Talento Dakataka, FBC Sports. That's it from Sports Tonight. It's back to Jackie now for business. There is a need to have more dialogues and understanding of trade agreements between private sectors in the Pacific region. This was highlighted at a trade workshop underway in Nandi. Akasita Tale has more. The Pacific Island Private Sector Organization, or PIPSO, organized workshop looks at building the capacity of the private sector. CEO Merea Wolawola says PIPSO says to maximize opportunities, businesses need to be part of negotiations to improve trade. It raises the, the living standards and likewise, you know, help the Pacific Islands provide for their families. It may uh, they are, um, you can see across the region, for, for some uh, uh, countries, they have very strong growth, whereas for some countries, they have very weak you know, growth in, in this regard. As PIPSO prepares for multilateral and regional trade talks, discussions like these provide an ideal opportunity to consult with members. It is important that for the private sector to contribute effectively to any trade consultation, or to add any useful input in terms of the trade agreements, it is important that the private sector knows uh, what's all involved in that regard. Funding will not be a problem anymore as the University of Adelaide has stepped in and AusAid also wants proposals for aid. We want to take back some messages to our countries but also through PIPSO uh, and indeed to funding bodies. Why aren't the public sector talking more to the private sector? What's, what's breaking down and what can we do about it? The workshop will discuss constraints and training needs to make informed contributions on national and regional trade policies. Akusita Tale, FBC News. It's the start of another week. Jen, how time flies. Yes, Jackie, it's a brand new week with a brand new weather report. Apparently, it wasn't just Suva and Savu Savu who experienced rain today. Mombasa also got in on the act with a few clouds and showers. Looks like it's getting warmer throughout the country. Temperatures were all in the range of 28 to 30 degrees. While Toka and Ba had the highest, while Savu Savu and the capital had the lowest. 
Tomorrow sees some showers over the interior and the eastern parts of the larger islands. The western side, however, will continue to enjoy nice sunny conditions during the day. Northeasterly winds will be at 15 to 20 knots. Now, a bit of creativity was used for tonight's photo. It's a sequence of four shots taken every five minutes before the sunset last Friday afternoon. And it was Pravinesh Prasad of Kulukulu in Singatoka who came up with this brilliant idea. Thanks, Eves Pravinesh. That was weather, as always. Till the next photo, stay safe and stay smiling. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. And the top stories once again, an employee of Lautoka Sugar Mill who suffered 60% burns has died in hospital. Foreign Affairs Minister Ratu Inoke Kumbambola has called on Fiji and Australia to mend their relationship and FSC workers vote in favour of strike action. Results from last, week, last week's opinion poll and we asked... 70% of respondents voted in favour of Fiji FA combining Tavo soccer with Vatakola. This week, we ask, is it still relevant for Fiji to be part of the Pacific Island Forum? Remember to, Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's your news tonight. See you again tomorrow, Modamata. Mm. <laughs> पांच पांच बच्चे होंगे पांच 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 हाय मैं हूँ आपकी सहेली वेनु सुनते रहिए मिर्च एफएम मैं हूँ ना नौ से बारह बजे तक